You're listening to a CNA podcast. South Koreans head to the polls on April 10th in a legislative election that could define President Yoon suk yeol as a lame duck leader or give him a mandate to push his party's agenda forward for the next three years. President Yoon has struggled after taking office with his approval rating falling for more than 50% at the start of his term in 2022 to the low 30s in January this year. But Mr. Yoon has found new political momentum from an unlikely source, the country's striking doctors. You're listening to CNA Correspondent, a podcast normally hosted by Teresa Tang, who is on vacation this week. I'm Arnold Gay. On the show today is CNA's Korea Correspondent, Lim Yoon Suk, who's been watching the standoff closely since it started in February. Yoon Suk, thank you very much for joining us today. Good morning, Arnold. Yoon Suk, I want to start by asking you to briefly tell us, you know, how a doctor's strike, of all things, has somehow transformed the political fortunes of President Yoon and his People Power Party. Well, I'll try to explain it briefly, but it is a very complicated issue. Um, you know, and it seemed like, you know, just a strike by doctors unhappy with the government's policy of wanting to increase the number of spots at medical schools by 2000 or so. Um, that is the sh- issue. And but that is an issue that has become so huge. And right now it is working in favor of President Yoon Yoon's uh, ruling party. Now, which some doctors and also some analysts claim is the reason why the government announced its plan just ahead of the elections, because the government, the ruling party, knew that this was going to help them, help their chances of winning in this election. And in fact, you know, surveys do show President Yoon song Yeol's approval ratings go higher because of this. Now, there was this one survey which showed his approval ratings go up to 41.9% from 39.5% just in that one week after the trainers, doctors started their walkout. And people we speak to out in the streets, they feel that the country needs more doctors. And so they are in favor of President Yoon's uh, policy. And I think it is very likely that we will see this being shown in the election next week. And you did mention at the start that it's a bit more complex than just about medical enrollment. So what are the other factors which also come into play, Yoon Suk? Well, apart from the doctor's issue, I think, you know, his handling of this doctor's strike is definitely going to be an issue, but it's only really one because analysts here are also saying that other issues, one of them could be the way that he's been reaching out to the ordinary Koreans in recent weeks. He has done a lot of town hall meetings. In fact, he's done about 18 since the start of this year, and he has been going around the country talking about different issues relevant to that area, the region, the people. Like, for example, he was proposing lifting some of the restrictions on areas near the military facilities so that that region can develop or he was talking about offering more scholarships to college students. And so it seems like he has been talking about a lot of the issues that are close to the hearts of the voters, and that seemed to be working. And he has, in a way, stayed away from any of the partisan conflicts, which, you know, Koreans are really fed up of hearing. And some analysts here are saying that it seems to be working, you know, and who doesn't like a president, you know, who's trying to to help the region develop and is trying to help the people. I just want to Go back to the point you were making about this being very deliberate. So this was something the Yoon administration has studied very carefully and timed it to be announced perfectly as well, just ahead of the elections which are coming up? You know, I can't say. I don't know for sure. You know, I've spoken to analysts and the doctors who are on strike say, yes, that's what's the case. But, you know, the answers really vary depending on who you speak to. The doctors uh, supporting this will be saying that. But, you know, the government is saying that this is a move that they needed to do, a policy they needed to carry out for many years, except it was something that all previous leaders didn't want to tackle because of the impact it could have on the medical industry and also because of a possible doctor strike. And so this was something that all, I think, previous leaders knew they had to do, but wasn't sure how to go about it. In fact, this is the first increase in South Korea in more than 20 years or so. And so President Yoon Song-yeol, you know, he's been a prosecutor all his life. 
Before he became president, he was the prosecutor general. And so, you know, he is the type to push ahead with whatever policies he feels that he needs to. And we've seen him, you know, deal very sternly with illegal actions in the past when there were strikes by the truckers here in South Korea. He still went ahead with his tough stance. And so many people feel that he felt that he could do this job. And that's why the government felt that they needed to push ahead with this policy. And whether it was time for the election or not, it's hard to tell. Is there a danger that he may push a little bit too hard? Because we've spoken to a number of people. One of them is Professor Andrew Kim from Korea University. I'm sure you know him. And he had this warning from the government, or for the government, I should say. What I noticed more recently is that uh, public, which showed uh, a very uh, big support uh, for the government action, is starting to voice its concern that maybe the government's handling of the whole situation was not the best way. So do you see any awareness of this growing sentiment? I mean, is there is there a tipping point you think that could have the public say, you know, I think you've done, you've gone too far, it's time to ease back a little bit, give the doctors a bit of slack and perhaps look at the, the quota number again? I think so. I think the analyst, Professor, could be right because this is something that's been going on for more than a month now. In the beginning, you know, like I said earlier, people were in favor of this hardline stance that the government was taking. But with no solution in sight, the attempts and no attempts by the government to try and reach some kind of a compromise with the doctors, I think a lot of South Koreans are now starting to wonder if the government really has any intention to resolve this or if this was really just an you know election policy. I think it's possible that the government may try to come up forward and say, let's try to see if we can reach some kind of a compromise because many mm. allies are saying that this could really then work in favor of the ruling party. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But it's true that a lot of Koreans here are fed up with the strike, but also with the government not being able to do anything about this and bring normalcy back to the operating tables. Ilsuk, let's talk about numbers now. 2,000 is the number that the government wants every year. Is there a magic number, though? Again, you know, the opinions seem to vary quite a bit. We have spoken to Professor Kwon Soon Man from Seoul National Uni about the medical school quarter, and here's what he thinks. Different parties have different opinions. For example, Korean Medical Association, they think there's no shortage of doctors at all. Whereas those working in, in those uh, teaching hospitals, tertiary hospitals, basically uh, professors in the medical school, clinicians, they think that we need some more doctors, but the 2,000 more doctors, as, as governments propose, that's too much. So they propose that more reasonable amount, I mean, increase in the supply of doctors is about 500. Whereas that, that some general public think that, that we need a, a big increase in doctors. So different people have different ideas. So 500, you know, that's a number that Professor Andy Kim mentioned as well. Where are we? Are we at some consensus about what should be, I suppose, an interim number? I think the numbers will stay as it is. It is something that the education ministry has also announced. And so I don't think they can do anything about the number. But what we have seen is that, you know, the doctor strikes, some of them when they were striking, they're saying that a lot of the doctors, uh, they're all focused here in the central Seoul area. And so what the education ministry has done is try to to allow more of the entry into some of the universities in the other areas and not here in the capital Seoul or the surrounding areas here. And so I think they are aware of the issues and the the topics uh, that the doctors have brought up. So they're trying to see what they can do about that. But I don't think the numbers will change. It's going to stay at 2,000. Okay. And what are the opposition parties saying about the whole issue? They I imagine would be tracking opinion polls as well and aware that this could be an issue for them in terms of the drop in in support for them? Definitely. You know, it's surprising how the opposition party have really not come up with any plans for this. And in fact, they support the government's plan to increase the number of emissions. They think that is needed. And what they're saying is that they think that the government should try to at least talk to doctors and come up with some kind of compromise. But Because they are in support of the government, they can't go against this policy. And so they haven't really been able to make much use of this for them in this election. Before the doctors walked off, we heard about the deal back 
scandal involving the president's wife that caused a lot of anger. There was the obviously the the tragic Halloween crush back in 2022 that saw a lot of deaths, and only recently did we have one senior official charged. I mean, are all these forgotten now already? Well, you know, we have a saying here in Korea that Koreans forget very quickly. Um, they get very emotional when something happens and then they forget. Um, and unfortunately, yes, I think the Halloween crush is something that a lot of people are not thinking about when they go to the polls. But I think the deer bag, that bag scandal is still something on the minds of voters. And I think it is going to have some kind of an impact in this election, especially among the young voters here in Korea. Koreans want an explanation, you know, an investigation into this, like with all other corruption cases here in South Korea. And they believe that if ordinary Koreans are not able to get away with any corruption or, or any crimes, then the first lady should not be given allowed to get away too. So I think this is going to be a critical factor in the election and it may show in the election results. And can you explain to us why South Koreans have such a low threshold for corruption? Don't tend to, you know, everybody around the world. I mean, it's, you know, South Korea has seen a lot of corrupted governments in the past. I remember the time when we had the former president Park Geun-hye and there was corruption involved then too. And South Koreans went out to the streets and they were, you know, uh, rallying. And in fact, it was the first time that South Koreans were able to impeach the president. And so I think South Koreans believe that they want equal stance. If they can't do something against of the law, then they believe that the government shouldn't. And it's the people's job to make sure that the government doesn't do that. And so, yeah, it's true. Now that you say that, it is true. I think we have very low tolerance for corruption here in Korea. And, and this is a factor as well, because we know that the opposition leader, Lee Jae-myung, is also you know facing corruption charges. Is that an issue in terms of the popularity of the opposition parties, for one thing? And the other, I suppose, issues which might be related is how he's handled the entire, if you like, episode. Not just about the doctor strike, but going back a little bit further as well. I mean, is part of the reason they haven't been doing so well down to what he's done and not done? I think so, especially because right now he is under trial. He is attending court hearings for his own corruption charges. And so I think he has lost a lot of his voters here in South Korea. Remember, he's the one who ran against uh, President Yoon Song yeol in the last presidential election. And, you know, he lost with a very, very slow margin. And so he was very popular then, but because of this corruption cases against him, I think he has lost a lot of that. And right now there's been a lot of internal struggling, internal fights, even within the party, mainly because of Lee Jae-yong. There were many who trusted him, but then there were also many of the members who joined that party because of the former president, Moon Jae-in the liberal president, Moon Jae-in. And now within that party, you have different groups, different people who feel that he should step down, Lee Jae-myung should step down because of his trials and because of those corruption charges against him, because they know that Koreans will not allow that. And But he hasn't stepped down. And so those who felt that they've had enough have just left that party and decided to form their own. And also those who feel that, you know, even though they do support him in a way, they're afraid that they could lose because of those corruption charges against E.J. Myung. And so it's difficult, but he seems very certain he is going to stay on. And so we'll see how it turns out. OK, talk to us about those breakaway parties you just mentioned. I mean, how important are they going to be? Because we know that, you know, the polls are saying that there is public discontent with both the PPP as well as the DP. Well, yes, you know, here in Korea, it's usually dominated by two main parties and they hold 270 seats in the 300 member parliament. But both parties have been grappling with internal struggles, not just the opposition, but also the ruling party. And so they have resulted in new breakaway parties uh, making gains. In fact, we have shown the surveys lately. For example, we have this young leader, Lee jun Sok, the former chairman of the ruling party. He has formed a new party here called the New Reform Party with other members against the pro yun song yeol faction um, because they believe that this government should investigate those allegations against the first lady. 
And so they bolted out and now they're gaining support, especially from the younger voters here in South Korea. Also because Lee Jin Sok, you know, he's a young popular candidate here among South Koreans. And also in the opposition party, there's a similar challenge as the former uh, Prime Minister Lee Na Gyeon under the previous government of Moon Jae-in has formed a new party too. And, you know, these are people who are against the Democratic leader Lee Jae-myung who they believe should be stepping down because of the criminal charges against him. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how the smaller parties do. We haven't seen a lot of them in the past. In fact, for very strong figures, like who used to be the former leaders of the political parties. And so we'll have to see how they do, but it will be very interesting to see. And are there going to be distinct voting blocks, the younger voting block, the older voting block, perhaps, you know, voters who are more attuned to gender-based issues? as has happened in previous elections before as well? I think so. The fact that you have these strong, smaller parties now, and we're talking about people, you know, who who were in the spotlight, who were famous here in Korea because they were the prime minister, they were the leader of the former party. I think it's possible even among the older generation who are very conservatives to feel like maybe Yoon song yeol is not a party, the ruling party, the main ruling party may not be the party for me. And they may go to the smaller party and, you know, give their votes because I think it all boils down to the corruption charges, the allegations. And that, you know, we've talked about it, how important it is to South Koreans. Uh, for the younger voters, surveys have shown that they really are the swing voters here in South Korea. And it's possible that any issues that crop up between now and the election will impact those young voters because I don't think a lot of them know which party they want to go to now, but they will really decide just a few days or even on election day. And it would be based on the issues mainly. Yes. Right. Understood. Okay. Yoon So, what's campaigning normally like in South Korea? Never seen one before. I mean, obviously, I've followed it as a journalist. Nothing quite like being on the ground. Are they, are they noisy, colorful, and chaotic? Are they, you know, controlled, sober, and organized events? Organized here in Korea? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, you should come and see one. They are loud. They're colorful. You know, usually, like, you'll be seeing vans and trucks decked in election gear, and they'll be going around different areas with loudspeakers, and you'll be hearing the candidate's name nonstop. And the person's vision, you know, what the candidate's going to do. And you hear this in the loud, on the loudspeakers all day, you know. Or sometimes in the daytime, they would go around with their megaphones on their trucks. And then they would stop at a main street or somewhere where there's a lot of people. And they'll be handing out flyers and all that. So it's lots of fun. You see a lot of dancing too, you know. A lot of singing by South Koreans. So lots happening here in Korea during the election. And you definitely have to come see one day. Okay, I'll do that. And if you're in South Korea, you definitely know campaigning is taking place by the sounds of it. Final question, Yoon Suk, before we let you go. Does it get nasty, the politics in South Korea, the way it might get in in America, in the U.S., for example? Nasty? Here, you know, I think so. I mean, you see what's going on in the Korean local TV now and all the debates and people talking. I think it does. I mean, and a lot of it's not really about the issues or how it's going to affect South Koreans, the voters. But it's a really, you know, mudslinging here and there and bringing up, you know, people's personal past and trying to do everything they can to win those votes. But I think a lot of Koreans now, for them, is really, I guess, like everywhere, it's really the the economy, how, how they're able to survive and how much they're able to make and all those issues that will determine who wins in this election. Very interesting. Yoon Suk, thank you very much. Thank you, Arnold. And, you know, we'll have presidential election in 2027, so come to Korea for that. <laughs> A quick note to tell you that you can catch reports from all our correspondents on CNA's YouTube channel and CNA.Asia. And a reminder that the TV episodes of CNA Correspondent air every Wednesday at 9.30pm. The team behind this week's edition is Sai Ye Win, Clara Ong, Crispina Robert, Craig Dale, Tiffany Ang, and myself, Arnold Gay. Thank you for joining us.